All right, guys, today we're gonna to be doing something pretty fun and a little bit different. Now, I like to go over my knife collection, and today I thought it would be pretty fun to go over specifically one knife from each brand in my collection. And some of these brands I do only have one knife for, and some of these brands I have lots of knives, knives for. But I do think it's pretty fun, and ultimately in my collecting kind of desires, I end up tending or maybe trending towards wanting to experience a lot of different brands, designs, and ultimately what those brands have to offer. And I also am pretty happy that the fact that being my position as a knife tuber, I get a ton of suggestions for trying out different brands like tour or others and so i like to be able to pick up knives from these brands that you guys recommend so that if people ask my opinion or if they ask what my experience has been with a particular knife or particular brand i can then proceed to add what my experience has been so without any further ado i'm going to see if i can fit all the brands on here there are a lot a lot of knife brands that i have and have had experience with but today at least i'm going to pull out all the knife brands, one knife from each brand, and kind of briefly go over that knife, that brand, and what I like. All right, guys, so it doesn't quite all fit in frame, but you guys can at least see a one knife from every brand that I own. Now, like I said, some of these brands I own multiple knives of, and a lot of these, if I have multiple knives, I just chose the smallest of them to try to get everything to fit in frame. So we're gonna go left to right in no real particular order, but let's jump right into it. So first off, we have half face blades. Now I probably should have chosen the Extremis Mark I for this, but I already had the uh, Disaster Junior out. So this is the Disaster Junior from half face blades. I have a couple half face blades myself. I'm not always the largest fan of this brand because they do tend to charge a premium, but overall, as far as the actual knives go, especially this Disaster, but even my Extremis, I do love them both. They perform well, they perform flawlessly, and uh, ultimately Ultimately, they are some pretty rad and pretty awesome EDC slash wilderness EDC is really where I tend to lean more towards these guys for carry. But this one, like I said, is the Disaster Junior CPM 3B, so super tough, almost like a kind of pry bar of a knife, especially with that tip. But uh, really cool blades. I like all of my half face blades and my collection of them continues to grow. <laughs> all right, so that's the first one up. Next one up is going to be Spartan Blades. Now this is one of their fixed blades. It's the Alala, and the Alala is nothing super, super special. This one's actually um, part of a kind of a joint project between Spartan Blades and K-Bar. So this one features 1095 Crovan, or CV, as it's designated there, which is the K-Bar kind of steel. A lot of people like to sleep on that steel, but honestly, 1095 CV is pretty cool. Uh, as far as it goes, though, this is an EDC fixed blade. I do think, as far as Spartan Blades goes, I'll likely be adding a Spartan Harzy folder here pretty soon. It's just more tracking down a Harzy folder, they all tend to sell out before I can grab one. So I'm definitely looking at them, but this is what I have for Spartan Blades at the moment. All right, moving down to this side, we got the good old fashioned Browse Blades Silent Soldier V2. Now this guy is a long, long since discontinued knife. They're very tricky to find, but Browse Blades is a really cool maker. Jason, I think, still makes knives. Not 100% sure on that, but the Silent Soldier is a really cool dog tag styled blade. It's really kind of like an early 2010s trend, but I really like it, and it was one of those fixed blades that I always wanted. So this little guy is made, in, uh, made of D2 tool steel. Nothing too fancy, but still a really cool little EEC neck knife. All right, below all of those and almost out of frame is my Tour Chasm Widow. Now this guy has quite the name, but this is a Smoky Mountain Knife Works exclusive version of the Tour or T-O-O-R Blades um, Chasm. And so this is the Tour Chasm. Like I said, the Chasm is a little bit of a smaller knife from them. They're all made in Tontos like this, as you can see. And this is a special version, the Chasm Widow, that has a 
um, G10 with a, or a multicolored G10, I should say, with a red in, kind of liner with this black millwork pattern. Really cool. I thought it was special and kind of neat. Definitely a little bit different in being that it is a Smoky Mountain Knifeworks exclusive. It's a little bit special, a little bit rare. I'm trying to remember. I think mine's like a number 700 something. 700 what? 59, I think it says. 59. We'll go with that. Now, this one's out of CPM 154. So the basically powdered metal version of 154 CM, super strong detent, super small. It's a little bit smaller than I was anticipating, so I might actually end up with a Tour Merchant 2.0, but these guys are pretty freaking cool. I'll have more videos on the Tour knives in the future, but I will say, just as a kind of note or spoiler, definitely a lot of heavy handle inspiration from the Sebenza uh, line, the, or I should say the Chris Reeve Knives Sebenza, like 21, 31 kind of line, lots of family resemblance there. All right, next one up is going to be Kershaw. Kershaw, or for Kershaw, I have the CQC6, I believe it's like the 6K maybe it is, but um, definitely the CQC6, this one's in D2, and this is one that I feel like I've mentioned quite a bit. It is a Chinese manufactured blade, so not my favorite, but it is a really solidly built blade, hard to complain about, and it's just a really nice steel frame lock. It has a lot of the attributes of the real Emersons, which we'll get to in just a little bit here. But uh, yeah, it has a lot of the good properties, really strong detent with a nice opening, and yeah, what really more could you ask for? It's basically an Emerson. <laughs> All right, next one up that's below this is a very unique knife by Paragon or Asheville Steel. They kind of go by both names. Paragon definitely makes a lot of very unique kind of crazy knives like the um, Warlock, which is what they're most well known for. But this in particular is a gravity knife like the Warlock, but this is the Paragon Phoenix. So the Phoenix is predominantly a one-sided blade, more like a traditional styled knife. This one does have a sharpened upper edge though with serrations. So this is the Paragon Phoenix. It's a really cool gravity knife. I like it. I liked it a lot growing up and I thought it was always a cool knife. So I got this guy for $80 and it was just an unbeatable deal. I was like, yep, I got to pick that up because I got a really awesome deal on a really cool knife. All right. Next one up is going to be my Protec Auto or Protec Strider Auto SNG. So we will look at the real SNG in just a little bit, but this is technically my only Protec for now. I'm definitely planning on changing that, but this one is a um, collaboration with Strider Knives, which we'll get to in a little bit, like I was saying, and it is just an automatic version of the SNG. This one is in 154 CM. And I totally forgot to mention the last blade too was uh, the Phoenix was an S30V, but this guy is in 154 CM. And uh, yeah, there's not too much more to say about it. Protec is really well known for their push button autos and for a good reason. They make really good uh, push, push, push button auto knives, just like this SNG. And I'm definitely excited to add more Protex to the collection. All right. Now, getting into Chris Reeve knives. So I do have a Sebenza 21, but I thought I would show the Incosi. I do like my Incosi just a little bit more than my 21, but this is a Chris Reeve knives Sebenza, or sorry, Chris Reeve knives, a large Incosi with micarta inlays, S45 blade steel, and overall, just a really solid, really squared away blade. I think Chris Reeve knives are some of those classic staples of a knife collection that if you really want high-end, classy, good knives that are just timeless designs that are just really just well suited to a wide plethora of different uses and situations, that is where this guy comes into play. It's a really awesome blade. So the Sebenza and the Incosi are both fantastic. All right. Next one up is literally just the smallest Benchmade. I have so many Benchmades, have owned so many Benchmades in my time, but this is a 557 Mini Griptilian. It's a 557 because it has that Tonto tip to it, and this one does have aftermarket, really nice G10 scales on it. Now this is a slightly newer version of the Griptilian, so this one features S30V as far as the blade steel goes, but it's just a classic, simple Griptilian. I really put 
put this one on here for two reasons. One, because it's a mini grip and it's easier to fit in this gigantic collection. But two, I think the Griptilians are really what made Benchmade. Like this is their bread and butter. And uh, without this blade or without this kind of design, this the Griptilian as a whole, Benchmade really wouldn't be where they're at now. So anyways, that is the 557 mini grip. And very similarly related to the mini grip is the Hogue Deca. Now the Deca is technically more of a competitor with the bug out because it's very thin, very lightweight. And uh, this one, what more can I really say? This thing is awesome. The Deca is really, in my opinion, what modern day Benchmade should be already. However, this is a Hogue, so it is a Hogue. And uh, I just really love what Hogue is doing, making really fantastic, well-priced USA knives. And this one in particular is in Magna Cut, but uh, overall, it's a great blade. Super, super, super slicey. All right, moving into the Hinderer XM18. Now I do have the three and a half version of the XM18. This is my three inch, like I said, it's just here because it's smaller and easier to fit in a pile, but this guy is made out of CPM S35VN and uh, there's not too much more I can say about it. It's an XM18, it's really awesome. I love my Hinderer XM18s, both of them. Uh, I will say my purple, larger version, is definitely a little bit more of a personal love, but this smaller XM18 is also fantastic, super squared away for a small blade. All right, next one up, and probably the most expensive on the list is my custom, full custom Gavco Knives Nurse XL. And this guy is just an absolute beauty. I love the heck out of it. It strikes so many boxes for me. It is my first full custom and uh, just such a beautiful knife. A lot of my subscribers call it the Halo knife because it definitely looks like it draws a lot of inspiration from the Halo video games. And whether it does or not, it certainly is an absolute looker and performer. Now this one is made out of Nitro V, it, which is essentially an upgraded or what some people would consider an upgraded version of AEBL. So really awesome blade. All right, as alluded to earlier with the Protex Strider SNG, this is the real Strider SNG. And like I said, this one's made by Mick Strider or Strider Knives. And this guy is pretty darn fantastic. Striders, if you know anything about the Hinderer, Chris Reeve knives, and Strider Trifecta, they're kind of like the holy trinity, so I had to have one. And uh, yeah, these things are much more of a kind of no-nonsense, um, hard user type blade. And these are definitely not as pretty or as nice as Hinderer's or Chris Reeve's, but they do look and act the part of a tough, heavy use folder that is leans more tactical i guess in its inspiration so this one is also worth noting it is made out of cpm s 30 v so nothing too fancy now i have many spider co's similar to my bench maids the one that i am going to showcase for this one is the spider co smock now this is just one of my more recent acquisitions for the spider co family and i just think it's really pretty it's really grown on me and uh, i'm definitely going to be doing some upgrades to this guy or at least some modifications i guess some would say and uh, it's worth saying the blade steel is cpm s30v much to some people's dismay but uh, i find that steel perfectly fine and the smock is really cool i think when i think of the smock i think it's kind of like spider co's version of the benchmade 940 it's a very thin very like very thin very low profile blade that's heavily designed for the purpose of just cutting things so you got this really nice hollow grind that is super super slicey and you have that reverse tonto or kind of worn cliff tip for heavy utility and uh, yeah overall this mock is a very unique design and there are tons and tons of mods that you can do to these guys to make them your own really cool flipper action too it's kind of like a weird front flipper because it's not like there's not a proper flipper tab in the back like you'd expect but it's not really a like a real forward flipper or front flipper so it's kind of this weird flipper design but it works very well and that adds to its super low profile 
All right, <laughs> as I'm running out of breath, we still got plenty of blades to talk about. So I'm gonna move some of these a little bit more onto the camera. All right, next one up is going to be Emerson proper. I showed off the Kershaw Emerson collab. This is the Emerson um, Mini Com or Mini Commander. I think it technically says Mini Com on it, but that just stands for Mini Com or Mini Commander. This one is in 154 CM, as God intended, so to speak. Uh, this is a classic steel and a classic knife itself. I think this is the oldest knife in my collection with a birth date of 2009. So at least the oldest that actually like has a birth date. There might be older in my collection, but that one at least has its birth date. Anyways, next one up is the TRM or Three Rivers Manufacturing or Machining. I can't quite remember if it's manufacturing or machining, but it's TRM. This is the Neutron. Now, a lot of people have been asking me to get a TRM in, and this is the one that I found. Got a really good deal on it. I paid, I think, like 160 bucks for it. And TRM, I'm just gonna slightly allude to. I got more videos specifically on this knife coming, but these guys are really, really affordable for what you're getting with a USA made 20 CV blade. I really, really dig this company. Whether you get something like the Neutron or the Atom, they do an excellent job and this thing is stupid slicey. So anyways, I'm not gonna take too much time in this video really going over it, but this is a T TRM Neutron and it is awesome. All right. We'll get to this one in just a little bit because I want to spend a little bit more time on that one. So we're going to talk about a few other blades in the meantime. All right, let's talk about CRKT or Columbia River Knife and Tool is what CRKT stands for. This is my um, large pilar with the flipper delete with a full carbon fiber flytanium show scale. So this guy's a little bit custom, a little bit bougie as some might say, but overall it's just a really nice blade. I personally like it. The flipper delete I did not do, but uh, I do not mind it because honestly it has a really good hole for flicking and it being that it is on bearings is pretty darn smooth and really flies out of its closed position. So that is the large pilar. All right, next one up, we'll go with the AD 20.5. Now this is made by Demco Knives or Andrew Demco. And uh, he's actually been making knives for quite a long time, primarily with cold steel. But this is the 20.5, the slightly smaller version of the 20, I believe it is. And uh, this of course, predominantly features the shark lock back here and it's a really cool blade really neat this is a one heck of an edc knife i do actually like edcing it quite a bit because this blade is quite slicey i also think i forgot to mention steels this trm uses cpm 20 cv the pilar uses i think it's 8 cr 13 mov and this guy uses os 10. So this is the OS 10 version. This blade does come in a wide flavor of different steels. All right, so now let's move into the home stretch. So next up is going to be zero tolerance, and this is a ZT0450. And this one, of course, is the carbon fiber uh, show scale version of it. This is in CPM S35VN, and this is honestly one of my favorite ZTs because I love the Sinkovich design. It has such a nice, almost trailing type point to it. It's such a slender, small, and really useful uh, EDC blade, especially if you like slicey and, like I said, just kind of tactical but practical blades. This definitely has that more kind of fighting style to it, but it also looks great. And not to mention, I love that full carbon carbon fiber show scale. And also, it's running on bearings, so it's super, super smooth. Anyways, next one up, we'll go with Microtech. And this is a Microtech Ultratech. This is a double-edged dagger style of the Ultratech, full top serration. And this one is made out of LMAX. Not too much to say, it is a, um, OTF auto so it is a pretty basic pretty cool blade this one it does have the tri-grip scales it is from 2015 if that will ever pick up and show it's, it's right around there <laughs> all right let's talk about the last two fixed blades so we have the tops 
Ice Dagger, which I do very occasionally EDC. It is a really cool dagger, double-edged blade, really cool, super robust, super tough. Then of course we have the SC3. I don't know if I'd consider every SC knife exactly EDC friendly, but the SC3, especially for wilderness, similar to the half-face blades, makes an excellent companion. All right, last one up and the newest brand to the list is going to be Heretic Knives with the Manticore X. And this is of course the Bounty Hunter version of it. So really cool blade, absolutely love this one. This one is in Magna Cut as well. So pretty freaking cool, I really like it. It's a little bit bigger than something like the Ultratech, but very awesome. And if you are a Star Wars Mandalorian or any kind of like Star Wars just in general fan, you will probably love this knife. It is, for those who don't know or don't know anything about the kind of Star Wars lore, this thing is inspired by Boba Fett. So that's why it is these colors, has this red Mandalorian kind of uh, logo on it is it is inspired by Boba Fett. And then on the show side, or not show side, but on the flip side, it is carbon fiber, and this is a camo fat carbon, and once again has those greens, yellows, and reds, if you can see them, they just barely show up, but uh, really cool, very awesome looking carbon fiber, and it's even milled to have this pattern, this like track pattern, on this side so overall really cool and of course it is uh kind of battle worn so it, it has the uh, kind of apocalyptic or just worn finish on it just looks so freaking cool so really love the way this thing looks and it is pretty darn cool so that is the heretic manticore x bounty hunter Anyways, guys, that has been a look over all the brands, or at least one knife from each brand that I own. There are an absolute ton of brands. This video took a little bit longer than I was originally expecting, but hopefully you guys enjoyed taking a look at all of these knives and all of these brands. As always, guys, God bless, and I'm out.